everyone. This video is for all the students who are in class 11 and studying the Tempest in the literature. Okay. And in this video, I will make an attempt to explain to you the settings, the characters and the themes of the play The Tempest. First of all, let me just give you the story in a nutshell. The Tempest is the story of an old magician named Prospero, who is the former Duke of Milan. Now, Milan is in Italy. Okay? It tells the story of his betrayal. Okay? Prospero was betrayed by his own brother named Antonio. So, it is just a three hour story. And, and this story basically deals with the aftermath suffering the helplessness of those enemies who wronged Prospero 12 years ago. Now, let me quickly tell you about the setting. The story is set on an uninhabited magical island. The name of the island is not mentioned in the story, in the drama rather. However, it is presumed that the island is somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle, close to the Bermuda Triangle, and um, the, this island falls somewhere between Naples, that is in Italy, and Tunis, which is in Africa. Okay, so the drama opens with a temp tempestuous storm. Okay, uh, a tempest is nothing but a sea storm, okay, which is cast by. The magician named Prospero. Okay? And there are people, there are royal passengers on board the ship. The ship uh, suddenly has a shipwreck. Okay? The ship uh, wrecks in the middle of the sea. And these people are stranded. Okay? And this is, uh, this is what the story is all about. Okay, it is through their difficult condition or it is through their uh, difficult situation. Okay, that Prospero, it is at this point in time only that Prospero uses his opportunity to seek revenge upon these people, okay, who have wronged him by throwing him out of his dukedom. Now, let me tell you who Prospero is. Prospero is a magician. He was the former Duke of Milan and he has one daughter, very beautiful and very, uh, very, very modest, very beautiful and very generous. Her name is Miranda. Prospero was thrown by his brother Antonio 12 years ago and left at the mercy of the sea with his daughter Miranda, who was only three years old back then. Okay, why? But why did Antonio do this? How did Antonio get an opportunity to do this? There must be a reason. Yeah, certainly what happened was Prospero was interested in the study of philosophy and magic. So he left the dukedom in the hands of his brother Antonio. Okay, and then he went to pursue his studies. In the meantime, Antonio started to enjoy his position as the temporary duke. Okay, he became uh, more and more hungry for power. He wanted to be the actual duke of Milan. So in order to become the actual duke of Milan, Antonio joined hands with King Alonso. Now King Alonso is the king of Naples. Okay, now... King Alonso and Prospero, they were very arch nemesis or enemies. Why? Because Prospero refused to pay annual tribute to King Alonso. He wanted to function independently. He did not want Milan to be under King Alonso or Naples. So, while he refused, there was an enmity between Prospero and King Alonso. Alright? So, Antonio, in the meantime, they take 
you know they 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 use their their relationship okay the bad relationship and by using king alonso and his brother sebastian antonio usurped prospero that means threw prospero from his legal position from his legal or from uh, from his power okay from his legal position or from his power that is from his dukedom how did he do this it was in the middle of the fatal night 12 years ago prospero and three year old miranda was thrown out in a dilapidated very dilapidated means very rickety very just at the carcass just the body of the boat okay they were left in a boat and they were left to die by drowning okay but prospero had a very loyal counselor and advisor named gonzalo okay throughout his reign gonzalo was very loyal to prospero and and later also he won uh, he won his sympathy by becoming a true friend and how did he do this gonzalo he sneaked and then he he brought water food clothes and magical books and gave it to prospero and miranda although prospero survived but he was marooned he was isolated on an uninhabited island okay but thankfully with the help of gonzalo that is the, with the books of course he got the books the, the books of magic and through the books of magic he made use of the spirits who inhabited this island and made his life a little easy all right so after prospero came to this island uninhabited island uh he um you know he 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 took the island he took the island from caliban caliban is half human half beast okay he is uh, basically half fish all right so Caliban was very happy to serve Prospero initially. So, he had he was the actual owner of the island. He had inherited this uninhabited island from his mother, from his deceased mother named Sycorax. She was a witch, okay? And uh Prospero, okay? Uh, later on, he loses his island to I mean Caliban later on loses his island to Prospero. okay that means when he, when he was happy and when he served prospero when he were, i mean when like you know initially out of happiness then he he gave out the island to prospero now this is an uninhabited island okay that means there were no human beings who had who were living in this island until prospero and miranda stepped in and naturally miranda has seen no other human beings besides her father okay so miranda lives with caliban the beast ariels and the only human who is her own father prospero okay now what happens is after 12 years prospero's enemies come close to this island by fate or by accident okay now how does this accident happen king alonso uh he had his daughter named claribel who was married to the king of tunis in africa okay so after attending all these people had come after attending claribel's wedding in tunis so they were returning home to naples okay so while on while returning home from africa to naples they came close to prospero's island okay so at this point in time prospero you know he used ariel he used ariel and and sought revenge against his enemies all right now who is ariel ariel is the master spirit he was earlier a slave to the witch the deceased witch sycorax sycorax had punished ariel and other spirits for not listening to sycorax's orders okay and he was actually tied 
in a pine tree for several years. So when Prospero came to this island, uh, with the help of his magic, Prospero released Ariel. Okay? And then, but there was a condition that Prospero put to Ariel. And what was that? That was, he would release, release Ariel, but Ariel should be, or should serve as a servant to Prospero. So out of gratitude, and uh, Ariel willingly served Prospero as, um, as a faithful servant throughout the play. Okay, so Prospero makes use of Ariel's power because Ariel can choose different forms. Sometimes Ariel can become, take the form of wind, sometimes thunder, sometimes lightning, and sometimes water. So by using Ariel's magical power, uh, Prospero, um, you know, gathers all his, uh, you know, uh, Prospero is able to gather or bring all his enemies under his control. Okay? So how does Ariel help in executing Prospero's plan? Let us do more this in detail. Okay. So, first of all, we know that there is tempest and amidst the tempest, there is a ship that is wrecked. Okay? So Prospero uh, commands Ariel to split them on different parts of the island. Okay? Then, first of all, a king Alonso's son Ferdinand is separated from his father. Okay? And is brought close to Prospero and Miranda. Let's deal with this part first. Prospero cast a charm upon Ferdinand, that is the prince um, of Naples. He was a very loyal, very generous and a very gentle uh, prince. Okay? He casts a spell upon Ferdinand so that he can make his daughter and Ferdinand fall in love with each other. So when Ferdinand comes ashore or close to Prospero and Miranda, they fall in love with each other at first sight. Okay? But for Prospero does not allow them to fall in love at once. Okay? What he does is, just like a very uh, responsible father, as a very caring father, Prospero tests Ferdinand's love for Miranda. There are certain tests that Ferdinand has to go through in order to win over Miranda. Since Miranda has not seen any human beings on earth when, he, when she sees, except for her father, so when she sees Ferdinand, she falls in love instantly at first glance. Similarly, now that Ferdinand is, uh, he is separated and then he thinks that he has lost his father. He is, uh, he is also uh, in a state of anxiety, okay? So although Ferdinand had come across a lot of beautiful women, okay, he had not seen anybody more exquisitely beautiful than Miranda, okay? But he is, so in order to do this, in order to uh, love Miranda and on, or, or in order to marry Miranda, Ferdinand is ready to go through the test, okay? He has to go through some menial words, loon, low level job and that is Prospero makes Ferdinand carry logs of wood from dawn to dusk. Alright? So however, Ferdinand passes the test very successfully. Though Miranda was quite surprised to see her father behave very very rudely or insolently to his uh, to the prince. Okay? Despite that, Ferdinand overcomes and wins over Miranda. So what Prospero does is, Prospero uh, engages Miranda and Ferdinand, okay? And by engaging this, Prospero is only becoming, what, what is he doing? He's just trying to elevate Miranda's position in the society, okay? By doing this, okay, there are two families and they are already, they are, they are already having feud. They are already having, there's already a conflict between, between, going on between the two families. Despite that, Prospero purposely wants Miranda and Ferdinand to marry or fall in love. But why is this? He does this so that he can strengthen his bond with King Alonso. Alright? So, uh, he engages uh, uh, Ferdinand and Miranda, but he makes uh, Ferdinand realize that he should not involve in any intimate relationship 
or any sexual relationship before marriage. Since Ferdinand is a very loyal and respectful person, a very respectful prince rather, so what he does is he assures Prospero by comforting him that he would not do anything of that sort, sort until marriage. So Prospero allows them to be together inside his cave or his cell, okay, and they are and they are found to they will be found to be playing chess. All right. Now let's go to the later uh, the other part of the story, which can also be taken as a subplot. Now we have the other group who is uh, like the other group who is on different part of the island. Okay, that is King Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, and Gonzalo. Now, King Alonso is in great despair. He has lost hope of his son's survival. Okay? And then, he is grieving a lot. He is in a grip of insanity. Okay? That time, it is Gonzalo who keeps uh, convincing or who keeps uh, consoling the king, comforting the king. Okay? And then, Gonzalo constantly takes care of the king. And one day, uh, and, and like, you know, um, once what happens is, when the king is no longer able to bear the loss of his son Ferdinand, supposed love loss, that is, Ferdinand, then the two treacherous brothers, that is Sebastian and Antonio, they plan a, they plan a conspiracy, or they rather hatch a conspiracy. Now, Antonio lures Sebastian with power. Okay, he says that Sebastian... Can, king, uh, can kill King Alonso and become the king of Naples now that Ferdinand is dead. Okay? He thinks that Claribel, it would be too far for Claribel to come all over and take over the kingdom. Okay? Or that Claribel is too far away to even know about the kingdom and its management. So, he... He, uh, he instigates, okay, he instigates uh, Sebastian to kill King Alonso. When Sebastian and Antonio are about to kill King Alonso, when he is asleep, Edo comes invisible and sings a song and wakes uh, King Alonso and Gonzalo. Upon waking up, they see that the treacherous brothers, that is Sebastian and Antonio, have just drawn, they're standing there with their swords drawn. And when they ask him, they say that they had heard a herd, they had heard some uh, lions roaring, that is why they were, they were about to kill the lions and not just, and not them. That is, and uh, that is how Ariel foils the plan. Then that means they're not successful in killing King Alonso and King Alonso. Okay, so that is the second that is the second plot after Ferdinand. Now, the other one is Stefano and Trinculo. Stefano and Trinculo are uh, they are they are humorous characters. They provide a comic relief to the otherwise serious plots. Okay, Stefano is always drinking. He is a male servant to King Alonso. He is also on board the ship. He was also there. So they are always uh, drinking. And Trinculo is the king's chester. And they are cast on the other side of the island. Okay. So one day. Uh, so, so once what happens is. King Alonso. Uh, I mean uh, Caliban. While he, is, while he comes out to get logs of wood. He meets Stefano and Trinculo. Okay. And Trinculo and St Stefano. Gives Caliban, they are, as they are always drinking, okay, they are always drinking, they are always uh, uh, making jokes or uh, cracking jokes. And then what happens is, they also, these two people, these two <coughs> characters, uh, they let uh, Caliban get the taste of liquor. So when Caliban um, first tries out liquor, he enjoys it and he starts to think that they are gods, okay. And... Uh, as it is, Caliban hates Prospero, okay, and uh, for one very strong reason, because Cal or Cal uh, Prospero and Miranda tried, you know, Caliban was very loved by Prospero and Miranda. 
they even taught them language and the ways of human human life okay or the human world but what happened was since caliban is a beast okay and he does not have supernatural power so caliban tried to take the chastity of miranda that means caliban tried to rape miranda earlier before this caliban was living with prospero and miranda in the same cell but when prospero comes to know about it he is thrown out okay he is thrown out and given a separate place to live that time prospero does not call Cal uh, kill caliban but he is made a slave to help prospero with the menial works like of carrying food uh, making fire and such stuff so um, so like caliban does has stopped liking prospero okay and then when so when he meets the stefano and trinculo later what happens is he you know he also, he tells them that he would be ready to serve stefano as his new master and leave prospero he also um, incites them or he also instigates them this is the third plot he also instigates them by saying that these two people could kill prospero and stefano can become the king of this island not just become the king of this island but also marry miranda however their plan also gets foiled because ariel appears invisible and and destroys the plan okay there are those are the ones the other characters who are on board the ship are bosun and marina they they make the appearance only in act 1 and in the last act bosun is the master of the ship he is shown as a very practical man he does not care about who is on board the ship whether it's the nobleman or whether it's the layman okay and then he says that you know the uh, the storm will not care about anybody's social or political position okay so uh they are the the bosun and marina marina means the one who navigates the ship they are cast ashore very safely of course on the harbor they are again separate okay so what prospero does with the help of ariel is that he splits these people in on different parts of the island away from the dear ones and makes them realize of their sins only after they have repented prospero chooses the path of forgiveness okay and after forgiving there is reconciliation they all go back to italy okay and and ferdinand and miranda also marry each other okay now again let me come back to to this uh, so how how do these people come to prospero so what happens is now we i have already told you that uh, ferdinand and miranda are together they are they are playing chair chess okay so uh, uh king alonso antonio sebastian and gonzalo they are very famished they are very hungry and thirsty so prospero orders ariel okay to go in a disguised form it to go in some other form invisible or rather as a harpy ariel goes as a harpy that this time and he presents a banquet of food okay and then then when these people this people get surprised okay as and, and very confused and of course there is also a fear that is lurking in them okay but they are they are happy also at the same time because at this famished state they are getting a a a, 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 a feast okay so when they when they go ahead and they are when they are about to dig the food what happens the food disappears here you just you know in the form of har harpy just uh, dis takes away the food so that time also these people get cheated okay and the next time what he does is that these people have been tied to to a group of lime tree that means to a uh, uh, to a group of a uh, group of trees is known as a group okay so they have these um, prospero ties these people just uh, before he sell in a group of lime trees okay and then uh, like uh, later when prospero tells him 
Prospero wants Ariel to take care of them, to take, you know, to be, uh, to follow them, to keep following them. They are seen very helpless. That time, Ariel comes and informs Prospero about their pitiful condition. Okay? Prospero gets moved. He gets very moved and what he does is, he calls all of these men, all of these men, okay, and he addresses, he addresses them. First, he reminds them of the deeds, of the wicked deeds. He makes them repent. At the same time, he makes Antonio and Sebastian. Okay? He tells Antonio and Sebastian that um, of the treacherous plan that they had ha hatched to kill King Alonso, he threats them with it by saying that, I can make your king go against you. I can make the king at your displeasure. Okay? And then I can make the king seek revenge against you or go against you but I shall not do that but there is something that I want okay what is that that is the dukedom so these people are also helpless they are all under Antonio's uh, prosperous control now so they are now ready to give the dukedom so um, uh, prospero's motive is also fulfilled he gets his dukedom okay after getting his dukedom prospero forgives them so one part of forgiveness is already done. Okay, now, now King Alonso, while he, he, he is in a conversation with Prospero, he tells him that how like, you know, the, we, uh, we want to know about your survival, how you survived for all these years. Okay, this is something very, um, this is uh, something very uncanny, very unbelievable. Because, uh, like, and we cannot believe how come we, like, you know, how come we are meeting you? How is this? Because we've just had a, we've just been suffering uh, because we've been suffering because of the tempest, which uh, from the last three hours. And then all of a sudden you are here and uh, like you was, you know, it's quite strange. And then, and then this, there's something that pricks him. The memory, the memory of his son, son's loss is very strong. It, it, it pricks him. It keeps haunting him. He's there at the back of his mind. So he begins to share, you know, there is a tempest and at that tempest, I lost my son. And then, although I'm trying to get rid of this, but still, uh, it, has been, it has been difficult for me. That is what he, uh, King Alonso tells to Prospero. That time, Prospero also says that, I have also lost a son. I lost my daughter. And then it's like quite surprising. On, on one hand, we have King Alonso, who is complaining of his uh, son's loss. On the other hand, we have Prospero who is complaining of his daughter's loss. Prospero has not lost his daughter, literally. But yeah, metaphorically, yeah. How has he lost his daughter? Now that Ferdinand is and Miranda are engaged, okay? Now they are about to give way to marriage. They are giving way to marriage. That means he has lost his daughter. That is what it means, metaphorically, okay? They share each other's grief. One has lost his daughter, the other one has lost his son. And after some time, what Prospero does is, he opens the curtain, okay, he draws back the curtain, and to Alonso's surprise, he presents Miranda and Ferdinand. Now, Alonso does not know how to, you know, he does not know how to react to this, because he had believed that his son is dead. For some time, he cannot be, and then he cannot even believe that, how his son Ferdinand can be with such a beautiful prince, with such a beautiful lady. Okay? But Ferdinand also, it's, it's, um, he is pleasantly surprised to see and find out that King Alonso is alive, his father, that is his father, is alive. So he quickly, he quick, he quickly goes ahead and then he uh, confronts that he has already He's already engaged with Miranda and would like to marry Miranda. And then King Alonso is definitely happy and wants Miranda to become the prince, the, the princess or the queen of Naples. All right. So in this way, Prospero has fulfilled his motive. Number one is he has gotten back his daughter. Okay. Number two is he has elevated the position of his daughter in society. And other thing is, he has also acted as a very responsible father, not allowing Ferdinand to, you know, to, to engage in any, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 
physical relationship before marriage. That way he is responsible. He's become a he's acted a responsible father. But at the same time, you know, giving Miranda to Ferdinand means elevating her position again, making her the queen. Okay? And by this way, he is also strengthening, he has also strengthened his ties with the king of Naples. Alright? So his motive is fulfilled. Then how does he deal with the other characters? Of course, he rewards, he would like to reward uh, Gonzalo for what he has done because Gonzalo has preserved Prospero. If there were no Gonzalo, then Prospero's life in that island would not have been difficult. So, Prospero is ready to reward Pro uh, Gonzalo after he gets back to Milan. Okay? The other characters are Trinculo, uh, Stefano, uh, Trinculo and Stefano. They are also brought... Uh, before Prospero, before Prospero's came, and then that is much later after um, after the after King King's uh, group come. Okay, that is after that the um, Stefano and Trinculo comes, and uh, Bosin and Marina they are also um, pros they are also brought by Ariel, so that they can all come together and go back happily to Italy. Okay, and then who will they go back to Italy? Uh, who will they take along? They will take along Miranda and Ferdinand who are newly engaged. Okay? Therefore, the play has a happy ending. Prospero, of course, chooses the path of forgiveness, but he does not forget to get his dukedom back. Okay? That is also important. And also, he has seen that, seen to it that his daughter is also in a better position after marriage. That means she will become the queen of Milan. Okay? That way <coughs> that way the play has a happy ending. Okay, now the themes in the play. The, the first theme in the play is travel and colonization. As I told you, it's just a three hour play but it takes place on an uninhabited island. Okay? So uh, this, the the action of the play takes place while they are coming, when they are traveling, okay, from Africa to Italy, okay. That is why it, it's about travel, colonization. Well, what is colonization? Colonization is nothing, but it is the means or ways of settling among or trying to establish control over indigenous people. Prospero tries to take control of Caliban, Ariel, and the other spirits on this island. He even takes, um, uh, even though he has lost his dukedom, even though he has lost his kingship to Antonio, but he still, he still gets it or he still assumes it by becoming the king of this island. So when there is colonization, there is master and slave relationship. Prospero definitely becomes the master of this island and making others the slave. And much later in the play also, while he is seeking revenge against his enemies, Prospero, you know, Prospero takes control of the situation. Prospero is actually in control of them. Okay? So while he is in control of them, this definitely shows the relationship of a master and a slave. This, these people are under Prospero. There is, when there is colonization, there is control. There is, uh, the, there is control and there is master and slave. So Prospero definitely becomes the overall master for them also. Okay? And the other, the other uh, theme of this play is power play. It is a power play. Power play is nothing but it is a tactics which is applied to gain power or influence. Alright? So in this play also, we find that each character is power hungry, okay? They are lured by power and they want to kill one another just to become the king of either Naples, either Milan or the king of the island. Who does this? Uh, king Alonso is actually to be killed by Sebastian and uh, Antonio, okay? But the plan gets foiled. So that Sebastian can become the king of Naples. The other one is um, uh, uh, Stefano and Trinculo. They plan to kill, with the help of Caliban, they plan to kill Prospero so that they can become the king of this island and marry Miranda. Okay? 
Gonzalo also, he wants to take charge of this island. And then although he is seen as a very, very optimistic character or very loyal character, and then who has, who tries to be humorous even in worst situation, okay? He, he has his own, uh, he has his own mind that means he wants to, he, he has a utopian, uh, he wants to create a utopian world from this uninhabited island where there is no rule, no politics, nothing, okay? That is there. But this is, uh, I mean, uh, Gonzalo's uh, power hungry is, cannot be, cannot, Gonzalo cannot really be seen as power hungry. And we have other characters, Boson and Marina. Okay, Boson and Marina, uh, they, they want to be on their own. They, they, they do not care about uh, whether they are noble men or whether they are common people. So this also brings about class conflict. Okay. The other uh, thing is, the, uh, the other theme is play within a play. There is a play. The entire play revolves around Prospero, his betrayal, revenge, Forgiveness and reconciliation. That is true. Okay. But besides that, there are other subplots also, which all these subplots are added to the main plot. And what are those subplots? Those subplots are Sebastian and and uh, Antonio's plan to kill Alonso is one plot. The other plot is uh, Stefano and Tricolo's plan to kill Prospero. Okay. Everybody is hatching a conspiracy to gain power that is there the other one is forgiveness forgiveness and, uh, and reconciliation it occupies or it, it is the heart of the play okay uh, but we must not forget that forgiveness and reconciliation takes place in the play at the cost of revenge and how is this revenge taken in the play how does this uh, how can we say that this is of the um, this is a play uh, which deals with revenge. How do we say that? Because Prospero makes his enemies suffer. Of course, he does it in a very altruist manner. Altruist means without harming. He makes sure that even the breath of their hair is not lost. All right. So, so Prospero, he, you know, he uses his magical power and the help of Ariel to make sure that. They are pricked by their own conscience. That means they are pricked by the sense of guilt for what they had done to Prospero 12 years ago. All right. For how they had treated Prospero and three-year-old Miranda. Okay. When they were left to die. So that one. So, so taking that, you know, at the back of his mind, Prospero seeks revenge. And um, in such a way that they are, you know, that uh, it is their own conscience or it is their own guilt that keeps haunting them. Okay? Because ultimately, they do have to surrender. They do have to surrender the dukedom. Okay? And they do have to reconcile with Prospero. And that is how all the characters in the play, they come together and then they, they go back to Italy. Okay? But Prospero... Prospero's sense of mercy is also strained because only after he has fulfilled his motives, his ulterior motives, first about his daughter, second about trending his bond with the king of Naples, third about getting the dukedom back, okay, only after he has gained all of these, then he chooses the path of forgiveness. So this is what the play is all about in a nutshell. In the next video, I will be explaining to you Act 1, Scene 1, line by line. Please stay tuned until then. If there is any query, any problem that you would like to address, please feel free to leave it, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy.